Good evening, everybody. Well, I say good evening, maybe it's the morning, or maybe it's the afternoon. Well, wherever you are in the world, hello. Welcome to this live stream. This is a totally live event <laughs> from uh, from my place down in Brighton. Um, yeah, welcome up and thanks very much for joining us um, for this session, this uh, Novation TV live stream. This is quite a special one, really. It's the first one um, of uh, 2021, so Happy New Year. And um, yeah, and it's quite a special one, as I say, because we've got a, um, a brand new little device to talk about, which is, of course the Novation Circuit Tracks, and here it is. So, um, yeah, we're going to explore Circuit Tracks. We're going to look at, take a look at what's new, take a look at some of the new functionality that we have uh, with the device, um, some of the really, really nice workflow improvements that we've got with, um, uh, with Circuit Tracks. Um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of have a bit of fun, uh, play around with it, get to know the product a little bit better and what we can do with it. Um, yeah, so let's, well, let's start off. I mean, essentially, I'm just going to have a quick look at the chat here as well before I do start off. So, yeah, okay. Uh, so, okay, well, I can see a little uh, thing at the bottom there, the last last uh, um, uh, chat message I can see. I'm here for the grey one. Well, let's talk about that elephant um, in the room just uh, off the uh, um, off the start. Basically, we're going to talk about circuit tracks tonight. Um, I'm not going to give you, um, you know, there's no kind of information to give out for um, circuit rhythm. It is a thing. It's out there. Um, it's going to be out there, I should say. Um, but if you do want to learn a little bit more about uh, circuit rhythm, then basically, yeah, if you go to um, our uh, web page, the Novation Music web page, and then in the products, groove boxes. Uh, you can click there and you can just basically find out more. And that's really all I'm going to talk about with Circuit Rhythm. There's a bit of information up on the Novation site already. But do, if you're interested in this uh, in this um, uh, device, uh, then, yeah, pop your details in there, put your email in, and then basically we'll send you some news as and when there is some to share. So before we um, uh, go any further, let's go back to this uh, page here. Um, yeah, so this is this is the the great thing about um, live streaming. Of course, everything is kind of done from one place <laughs> at one time, and it's you know it's it's got its challenge. <laughs> so let's uh, take a look at circuit tracks. And uh, I mean, obviously, one of the first things that anyone can see is that you know it looks very much like the original circuit. You know, it's kind of that same kind of layout. You know, we've got our macro knobs at the top here. We've got our pads, you know, with the RGB LEDs behind them, all the kind of the, the controls around the side as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it has got a lot of that DNA in here, of course, you know. Um, but what I would say is that the, the improvements and the, um, you know, kind of the redefining of this workflow has really taken circuit tracks to a whole new level it, it really is and i think once you start to experience kind of all of these refinements all of these added features um and yeah essentially kind of just let's say kind of sorting out if you like all the firmware updates that we had for the original um uh, uh, the original circuit but into kind of the whole workflow aspect of circuit tracks it really is kind of more of the you know it's more than the sum of its parts once you start working with it it really opens up a brand new kind of way of of, of really kind of approaching um circuit making music with a circuit on circuit tracks um, so we're going to talk about quite a few of those sorts of things throughout uh, today. So let's just have a, a think about kind of what is new, um, you know, on the surface of it. So one of the first things to mention is um, it is still battery uh, battery uh, 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 powered if you want it to be. Um, it, although the difference now is that it has got a lithium iron battery in here, which is rechargeable. Now, of course, you can power it from a USB connection if you want to, or you can just simply recharge the lithium iron battery in there. You'll get about four hours worth of music making with a fully charged battery. And, you know, the... the, the the, the life of the battery is, is going to be great. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to, you know, there's no worries in terms of kind of the, the sort of, let's say that the lifetime of the battery in there, it's, um, it's going to, it's going to last. And um, yeah, and so that, you know, it's still kept that kind of portable approach. It's still a truly portable music making device. So, I mean, that's one of the first things to mention. We've got this, um, we've got this battery in there now. 
uh, rechargeable battery, which of course, you know, it makes makes quite a lot of difference. And it saves you having to buy those little kind of AA batteries. Um, yeah, constantly. <laughs> so uh, it really opens that up, which is nice. Um, other stuff that we've got on here. Now, I just want to have a, a, a little moment to have a look at the connectivity. And I think it's this page. Yes, that's right. So um, now the connectivity on here has really been upped as well. And you can see on the back, um, we've got, obviously, we've got our outputs, of course. We, we can connect this to any kind of um, speaker system or mixer or whatever it is that we want to. But you'll also notice that we've got full-size MIDI DIN on there now, in, out, and through. And the, um, the through is actually really quite interesting because the through can also be a second MIDI out if you wanted it to be. Now, why would you need that? Well. Um, if you do have an instrument, a synthesizer that is MIDI controllable, um, but that itself doesn't have a MIDI through, you know, that's going to be the end of the uh, kind of MIDI chain in, in that. So by having a second out option in circuit tracks opens that right up as well. And um, and yeah, I mean, that that's a really nice feature. But if you want it to be set to a MIDI through, then of course you can switch it to MIDI through as well. So that's the first thing, you know, you see we've got full size five pin MIDI DINs on there. Um, you'll also notice that there's a little um, a socket labeled sync and that is operating an analog sync output. So, um, and I can see in the chat here, someone's asking, Ele Electronic Sounds Audio, hey there, um, is asking about the, uh, the sync input, does it work with Eurorack? Basically it's a sync output. And the output, yes, will sync will sync to um, uh, will sync to Eurorack. I mean, it's sending out an analog clock signal from that. Uh, so that's again really useful if you want to integrate it into that world. Now, the other uh, really big thing that we've got here are two audio inputs as well, and these can be mono inputs, or you can also set them to be used as a stereo pair. pair. You can do that in the um, you can do that in the uh, um, yeah, in the mixer. And uh, Dan Simpson's asking, is he actually reading this live? Yep, I'm afraid I am, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, yeah, so yeah, the inputs, um, essentially, they can be two um, mono uh, 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 audio inputs, or you can use the mixer to use the, uh, the pan control to separate those out as a stereo. Um, also, you'll see that we have a micro SD card slot on the back as well, and that's a really big thing for circuit tracks because it means essentially. And we're going to talk into we're going to talk over the um, uh, the packs approach that we have with circuit tracks, but the addition of that micro SD card um, means that you have got a ton of storage in the device. Um, obviously, when you have your uh, when you have your micro SD card installed. Uh, next thing is a USB connection, and I'm seeing a lot of people asking, does it support audio over USB? Well, no, it doesn't. It is, you know, a standalone device. If you're going to record your audio, you would do that in the same way as you would with any kind of synthesizer or any kind of, you know, external, um, you know, piece of hardware. You're going to record that in, um, you know, using the audio outputs. Um, so no, there's no audio over USB, but it will charge the um, the lithium ion battery, of course, and of course you can use it as um, you know as a power supply um, socket as well. And of course, um, the USB connection is essential, really. I guess if you're going to connect to the component software, and we're going to take a good look at components as well um, during the session. So uh, let's ooh, let's go back to this page. That's better. <laughs> OK, so we've seen the back of the unit there um, and you can see we've really upped a lot of connectivity on there. And what's really nice about that is that the, the circuit tracks can really be kind of like a centerpiece in the studio kind of setup. For example, here I've got my circuit tracks. I'm sending MIDI out to the Novation Peak instrument just up at the top here. The audio from Peak is coming back, and you might not actually be able to tell from this camera shot, but I've got these really kind of low-profile, flat uh, jack plugs things here, and they're going into inputs one and two on the back here. So, you know, essentially, the circuit tracks and then just get plugged into the mixer. I've got the 1010 uh, blue box here. That's just getting plugged into that. And, you know, I've got a kind of a totally self-contained little setup here, and it's a really nice, um, a nice kind of thing because you can really start to in incorporate um, external devices into circuit tracks and that brings me neatly onto another of the features that we have so let's just kind of go through um you know what we've got on the top panel here so the circuit tracks we've got our macro knobs 
now circuit tracks is made up of two internal synth tracks um it's a really powerful synthesizer inside here um essentially it's the nova synth engine and you know this is you know kind of if you like a port from the original nova engine and through the ultra nova and the mini nova and that same engine is in circuit tracks of course uh, the nova synth um, was was uh, was originally um one of chris huggett's um uh, great synthesizers as well and you know of course chris's dna um is also in circuit tracks as well um you know with 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 the nova engine and it's a really powerful uh, synthesizer we'll take a look at kind of the kind of features that we have um on the Nova engine when we get to, to look at components. But let's just think about what we have. So we have um, synth one, synth two, two internal synth tracks. They're six part polyphonic. So we have up to six notes per track if we want. Um, and then I'm gonna skip over the next two tracks for the sec for this moment, but then we'll go to the drum tracks. Now, on the original circuit, we had two, essentially two controls. One would give us drums one and two, and they would exist on the same page. Um, and then we'd press the other button and it would give us drums three and four and they would also exist on the same page. Um, now the drums have their own independent, totally discrete sequence of pages and that really opens up a lot of possibilities. You might see in this drum layout, you'll notice that we have kind of a totally different layout. In fact, let's just go to an empty project here. This is an empty drum track. And if I hit play, you'll see I've got my sequencer running across the top. Actually, the sequencer used to be at the bottom. That's flipped up to the top now. And that's left this, this row of 16 pads at the bottom here to actually allow me to play my samples. And um, why do we need that? Well, essentially, this is kind of a trigger pad, a set of triggers for the samples or you know, the samples that we have in our presets here. But basically, from the drum page, I can now play my Trigger, trigger my samples into the sequencer. So, I mean, just as a quick demonstration of that, I'm going to hit shift and turn the click on, which is another great feature. I know a lot of people were asking for that. I think it's a really useful thing. We've now got a click, um, click track in there. So I can just hit record and then just simply, you know, record in to the sequencer. Um, I can also, from this page, enter steps in. Whilst we're not in record, I can say, okay, well, on this step, I would like this hi-hat. Well, that's a, that's a nice beat, isn't it? <laughs> that's a good start, as I say, totally live. <laughs> but basically, you know, we've opened up the possibilities of being able to record your, you know, record your sequences in, um, get some really nice sample flipping stuff um, done um, directly from this page as well. So I'll just quickly, actually, let's just tap some uh, some points in here as well, and we'll just get another couple of kicks in there. So that's sounding a little bit better. Of course, I've got my same sort of controls up at the top here. So I have a decay. So I can bring things in nice and tight or open them back out. I can use the pitch control here. We've got a distortion for the drums as well. And now you've got a filter as well, high pass and a low pass. And that helps you really kind of shape and sculpt in those sounds. And of course, all this is automatable. So let's say I'm going to take the, take the distortion off, but I'll just automate a bit of distortion in this. So. so you can kind of really get sculpting with the sounds. Now, we've got a fairly decent beat going on here. And that is just using one drum track. So I can go to the next drum track here, drum track two. Let's add some hi-hat stuff. Actually, we should have chosen, chosen a different sound. So let's just clear those off. And once again, maybe, actually, let's add some extras in. Okay, and now I'm gonna use the record function. Just to open up that decay. Just to count, yeah, just basically get a bit of movement in there. Okay, so you know we've with the new redesigned drum um, drum pages, we've got four totally independent uh, uh, drum tracks um, available to us, and each of them, as I say, has its own set of controls. Now, of course, this is sixteen um, samples. We have sixty-four samples in a pack, and if I want to access different samples, so let's just go to a fresh thing again. So. 
So that's the first sort of page, if you like. Then I can just bank down. Now I'm going to 17 to 32. And then, what's that one? That's 33 to 48, I guess. And then 49 to 64. So we've got 64 samples um, in here. Now, you know, that is a lot. When you think about drum hits, you know, we've got a lot of kind of um, opportunities to really sort of, uh, uh, yeah, get a lot of different sounds in there. Some people asking about how much... Um, how much sample time is in there. Um, this is the same as the original circuit. This is 60 seconds, but as I say, I mean, it, a lot of these drum hits, you know, that's gonna be less than a second's worth of, uh, of, 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 of sample. Closed hats as well, kind of, you know, half a second of, of, of sample time. Um, sure, I mean, if you wanted to add longer samples in there, of course you can do so. Again, we use the component software to upload our, our samples into the device. But let's just think a little bit for this at this point now about packs. So um, what is a pack? Well, on the original circuit, we had the projects button here. And the projects uh, button basically opens up these different kind of, let's say, tracks that you've pre perhaps created. Um, a, a project or a session, as they used to be called, was a collection, well, it was essentially, you know, a piece of music that you'd worked on inside of here. And we had uh, 32 projects within the um, within the circuit, the original circuit. We've now got 64 projects in there. Um, and each of these projects accesses the same 64 samples and also, from the synth point of view, 128 sam uh, synth presets. So now we've got twice as many projects in one pack. We have twice as many synthesizer presets, 128 in one pack. And we still have uh, 64 samples in one pack. So a pack is a collection of 64 samples, 128 uh, presets, and 64 projects. But if I press Shift and the Projects button, which is also labeled with packs, written above there, now I have access to 32 different packs. So this first pack here is the factory pack, but I'm going to go over to this pack now here. And we just select it here in this pack page. I hit the play button and it's just going to take a second to load that pack in now into circuit tracks and now if i go to my drums i have a totally different collection of samples totally different collection of uh, synth preset sounds 128 of them and a brand new set of projects as well so the packs really opens up kind of let's say the 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 you know, the, the, the amount that you can do with a circuit tracks, you can think of one pack as one kind of working instance of circuit tracks, the projects, the samples, the sound, uh, the sound patches. But we actually have 32 of those available to us. And of course, that requires a micro SD card to be installed in the back of the um, in the back of the device as well. But it does mean that you can, you know, well, actually, I did some sums earlier. You've got the opportunity for 4,096 different synth presets. 4,096, what is it? No, 4,096 synth project, uh, synth patches, 2,048 samples, and 2,048 projects. So, I mean, that's going to be enough to keep you going for a little while, I'd have thought. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's um, go back to um, go back to an empty uh, thing here, and I've got a whole new set of samples in here. This is actually a pack that's been worked on at the moment. Um, uh, the factory pack, of course, is coming with the unit, but do keep your eyes open on the component software as well, because there are going to be some other packs uh, going to be um, uh, going to be provided for you, um, and this is one of them um, that will eventually kind of make its way up into components. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's, we've looked at the drum tracks, we've looked at the synth tracks, let's now consider what we have here, which are the MIDI tracks. And again, I think this is a really, well, a superb addition. Um, for the likes of myself, I mean, I kind of sit here and make music in this room and I've got a, a, quite a few different synthesizers in the, in the room and I'm always looking at, at ways of how I can control them and how I can make my music with these, uh, with these hardware devices. And Circuit Tracks now has two additional uh, sequencer tracks in there, which are uh, basically two MIDI sequencer tracks. And these are not attached to an internal synth engine. Um, these are basically, um, yeah, 
These are just freely assignable to whatever you want. So in my instance here, I have my peak synth. I'll just change the preset to that. Set up to play from MIDI channel two. Oh, sorry, not MIDI channel two, MIDI track two, this track here. Um, once again, we've got scales mode on here and I, I'm, I'm afraid having sort of studied trombone for a long time i kind of like all the notes in between so I've, i always kind of set it to a chromatic but if you are somebody who wants to work with the different scales function they're all still on here as well we've got 16 different scales that we can use it can be really useful actually um but for my purposes i'm going to stick with um with a chromatic and on midi channel 2 so what's going on here well let's just i'm going to very quickly just program up um, a bit of a beat again. Uh, actually, we do this. It's, you see, this is all, as I say, kind of live, and <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity for it to all go kind of wrong. But let's just get that tempo up a bit. Okay, so I've got a beat there programmed on just on one drum track. As I say, that's just using one of the drum tracks there. Now on MIDI two, I can just hit record in, and let's uh, yeah, just record in a part. Okay, so this note, I made a bit of a mistake, so I can just clear that note off. So this now is controlling my peak synthesizer. So if I, I don't know, let's see, grab the filter. I can start to control it there, no problem. But we've also got our macro controls up at the top here as well. Now, obviously on the synth part, they're controlling various different aspects. We're going to talk about the macro controls for the internal synth shortly, but on the MIDI tracks, we have these as freely assignable controls for our external gear. So um, I can grab this filter. Uh, I've, I've mapped the filter for the peak to this pot here. So what does that mean? Well, we've got automation in here, so I can just hit the record button. And I can record in essentially me waggling this knob as part of the sequence. Here's the reverb, let's take that down. Okay, let's just add a few extra drum parts here as well. So I'm gonna Okay. So let's uh, go to our mixer now because the audio from the uh, peak is coming in to the circuit tracks and you'll see now macros three and four here have got an LED and if I turn that down I can take the um, take the peak coming in here volumes down so now at the minute um, this is set so that um, basically they're just coming in as two mono signals. So if I press the down arrow here, we now enter the kind of the panning controls on the mixer page. So now I can just separate those out left and right. And again, we'll just bring the volume back up. You can hear now, well, I don't know actually if the, if the stream is set up for stereo, I kind of hope it is, but hopefully you can hear now that we've got the stereo going on. And again, I can swap that over. And of course I can hit record and do a bit of automation of the panning. So by having the audio inputs here coming directly into circuit tracks, um, it just means that this is now kind of really taking control of the peak synthesizer. Now, of course, this could be any kind of MIDI um, uh, MIDI based synthesizer. It just so happens I've got my peak here. Um, but it's the fact that you've got your MIDI sequencer tracks, you know, two of them dedicated for sequencing external MIDI device and you've got your audio inputs as well here, really opens things up. Now let's just, I'm gonna clear the um, automation that I put onto the, uh, yeah, onto the, onto the panning. And actually, yeah, I'm just gonna clear the automation on the frequency. And I'm gonna go to drum three, and I'm gonna just basically put a kick part in. If I find a kick, let's get a kick. There we go, that one. I'm just gonna put a four on the floor kick there. Okay, now what I've done that is basically on my MIDI channel here, we have also got the side chain. Let's just bring the filter down a touch. 
We've also got the side chain control. Now that used to be a button up at the top here, but now it's on the effects button. So how do I access that? Well, if I press effects, it takes me to my effects page. And of course I've got audio coming in here, three and four, I can add some reverb from circuit. Maybe add some delay from circuit as well. Okay, so this is now Peaks audio passing into circuit, going through the effects processes internally in circuit. Have the filter as well, the master filter. And of course, any audio coming in is also going to pass through the master filter as well. But let's just take the delay and the reverb off. And if I press effects again, it takes me through to my sidechain page. Now, we have two sidechain pages. We've got one from the internal synth engine. You can see we've got purple and green, so synth one color, synth two color. But if I'm focused on one of the MIDI tracks and I go into the sidechain page, now I have access to sidechain on my um, on my external audio coming in. So we've got these new switches up at the top, and this let me this lets me choose where the sidechain bump is going to come from, where it's going to where the ducking signal is going to be triggered from. On drum three, I've got this four on the floor kind of pattern. So. Let's just add some side chain to that now. Now let's go back to MIDI 2. This is the filter. A bit of a reverb in there. So you can see there that we've got, you know, we've got this side chain, we've got the audio effects. The audio input here actually really builds into the um, into the circuit tracks and you know, we've got this kind of this central point. We've got this really great control surface. It's sequencing, it's sequencing the note data, it's sequencing the automation of the parameters as well. But also that signal is being injected directly into the circuit track signal path. And, you know, we're able to basically treat the external device um, as if it was just kind of part of that whole circuit tracks kind of uh, setup. So, um, yeah, so let's let's have a think now about, okay, let's go to the synth part. Actually, yeah, let, yeah, let's go to the synth part. So I'm going to start a new project again. Um, and once again, I'm going to just find a bit of a beat to make. So, so I'm just going to put some, put some steps on here. God, no, I don't know what that'll sound like, but... Add a bit of yeah, a bit of the distortion into that. Maybe filter that down a touch. I just drop the decay back a touch. And then on this one, let's add some hats. So okay. So we're going to look at the synth parts now. Um, one thing to note, and this is a change on circuit tracks, is under each of the macro controls, the synth parameter controls, if you like, I mean, obviously they function as many different things throughout circuit tracks kind of workflow. But when you're on the synth page, you'll see now that we have got some little bits of writing underneath. Actually, if I just switch the camera angle, oh, I move that naughty keyboard out of the way. But you can see now we've got these various different things. So we have oscillator, oscillator modulation, amp envelope, filter envelope, filter frequency, so I've got the cutoff frequency and the resonance, a general modulation control and a general effects control. Now, um, you might be thinking, well, hang on, is that, does that mean that we only have these controls for the synth engine? And the answer is absolutely not. We have full control still um, within the Nova synth engine and we, we can go to components to, uh, to get access to that full synth engine. But with circuit tracks, we decided that rather than kind of, because of course on the original circuit, there was no labeling underneath here at all. And it was a little bit kind of, you know, hit and, hit and miss as to whether or not you got the control that you wanted, that you were looking for when you were, um, uh, you know, when you were manipulating the sound. So what we've done is we've just put these on as kind of suggestions, just little labels as suggestions. And all of the presets, all of the new factory presets, all of the packs that we've been working on as well, they also kind of follow this little convention. And it's surprising how much of a difference just kind of following that idea um, of kind of getting the names, you know, kind of giving a general idea of what these things are going to do makes to kind of when you're working with the synth. So, for example, just going to hit the preset button. Yeah, let's get this one. It's quite a spiky kind of FME sound. Okay, so now filter. 
There we go. Straight away, we've got the filter. Resonance. We can increase the resonance. Bring that back down. We want a bit of filter envelope. Let's open up the filter envelope. I'll just bring it down so we don't have any envelope there. Amp envelope. So we could give it a nice kind of long sustain sound or a bit more of a kind of a snappy sound. So just, you know, by virtue of the fact that we've got these kind of, these additional, um, you know, labels on there, just as I say, really opens up that kind of workflow a load more and just gives you a lot more kind of understanding of what's going on. Right, let's get something recorded in. So I'm going to go back to my scales here and ah, right. Yes, this button here. This is a really important button. Um, so circuit is made up of patterns. We have eight patterns and you'll see on the patterns page um, that it's completely changed now. Again, we used to have banks of eight, sort of four columns of eight. And that was really because the drum tracks, drums one and two were joined together, drums three and four were joined together. So you only really had a common pattern between two, both of those, uh, drums one drum and two, drums three and four. They shared kind of the pattern structure. Of course, we didn't have the MIDI tracks as well on the original circuit, but now we have got essentially eight independent sequences on board circuit tracks. Now, um, we still have eight patterns, but obviously we can see four of them at this point, but we have got our down arrow here, and this reveals pat uh, patterns five through to eight. So we still have our eight patterns there, and we can still chain them. So for example, if I want to chain pattern one through to four, I can just do that very simply like that, but say I want to chain it from pattern one through to eight, I can just press the down arrow, keep this held down, and now press number eight, and you'll see now I've chained one through to eight. So it's totally doable still. Um, but we have got another nice feature in here, the scenes, which I'm going to come to in a little bit. But I just wanted to sort of mention about the patterns here. So we still have eight patterns. And if you look at them, you would think, oh, we've still got 16 steps. Actually, no, we don't. We've got th potentially 32 or anywhere between one and 32 steps for each pattern totally independently. So how does that work? Well, this button here is called the steps page. It's labeled 1 to 16, 17 to 32. And let's I'll just clear up so it's not on there. So if I just hit play, I'm just going to very quickly record a 16 step part in. So okay, let's just get that sound signed up a bit. There we go. So that's 16 steps. But if I press this button, you'll see now I've got another page that it's alternating between. You see it alternating here in the colors as well. Blue is the first 16 steps. Orange is step 17 to 32. So I can now treat this as a double length uh, pattern, double length uh, sequence, essentially. So let's add some extra notes. Okay, so that's kind of nice, but let's say I want to just kind of maybe change that, that last page at 17 to 32. Obviously, it's alternating and it's running with the playhead. It's moving through. So let's say I want to quickly just kind of clear these notes. Oh, ah, it's gone back to page 16. No matter. We have a thing called view lock. So shift in the patterns button. And you, again, you can see it's labeled here. This says view lock just on it here. So shift and view lock now lets me lock my view onto either pattern uh, steps 1 to 16 or steps 17 to 32. And of course, whilst I'm on this view, I can kind of just say, OK, well, let's start to put some extra notes in. So add a bit of a reverb to that as well. That's delay, but that's fine. <laughs> OK. So we've got all of that just held in one pattern here. Um, now, you might also notice that um, when I've got ViewLock turned on, the patterns that are displayed are flashing white. This tells me that the patterns that I'm going to see when I look at the, uh, the parts, the drum parts or the synth part or the MIDI tracks or whatever, um, it's going to be this pattern. So if I hit play, you can see synth one has got that part in. 
Now, if I go to view lock or pattern view lock and press shift and let's choose this one. Okay, this pattern is playing. The first pattern is still playing. That's the bass line that we just put in there. But when I go to look at synth one, you see it's empty because I'm viewing this pattern. Oh, I just pressed it by accident. Anyway, there we go. I'm viewing this pattern in the sequencer page here. So now, of course, I can say, okay, let's add some extra notes. Okay, so I've now created a pattern. Whilst this first pattern was still playing, now if I want to play that next pattern, I can just press it. So it's just gonna it's gonna take me to that new pattern. Of course, that's the one that I'm viewing. If I press shift, let's view that first pattern again. And now I can see steps one to 16, 17 to 32, and toggle between those. Maybe make some amendments to that. So, so this is a great way of kind of developing what you're doing musically while the sequence is still carrying on. So let's go back to this um, to this pattern now. Let's go to another synth part here now, and I'm going to find another preset sound. That one's all right. That's a nice poly sound. Okay, so obviously that's a 16-step sequence. Let's uh, double the amount of steps on there. Okay, and now we can see we've got more. I want to expand this so I get to see two, two um, octaves. I can just press the note button to expand that into two octaves. Okay. Again, go to the synth part here. So, got some random notes somewhere. Okay, that'll do. Anyway, you get the idea. So adding this kind of this pattern page here, you can see we've got we've just basically been working on one single pattern, but we've kind of got quite a bit of stuff in there. And again, using view lock means I can focus on a totally different pattern while the sequence is still running. And this um, is really kind of, I think personally, a bit of a game changer because um, I know that when I'm kind of working in this kind of environment, in this kind of sequencer environment, I really like to, um, you know, just kind of keep the flow going and sort of stopping and starting the, uh, the sequencer can be a bit of a bind sometimes. But now I can view lock my patterns and then just basically look at any pattern that I want and start to edit that or add extra notes or kind of basically start from scratch in that pattern holding there. Um, and yeah, it's kind of nice. Right, I'm going to go back to the drum parts now again. Let's get some different samples in there. Let's close off those synth parts for now. That's perhaps not. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so once again, I can kind of go into the, the pattern lock bit here. Oops, turn it on. This drum part here. So I'm now going to duplicate this pattern to here. I'm going to view lock this pattern. Now this top one is the one that's playing, but I can add some extra notes in there, so. Um, let's get a bit of swing on there as well. Okay, now we'll go to play that pattern. Go back to my drums here and just kind of record a bit of stuff in with the automation. that I think okay now let's go to this first drum part let's mute the others off so I've just gone to the mixer page just muted them all off and it's quite a busy kind of kick drum pattern this so let's have a look at what we can kind of do to kind of 
just maybe kind of thin that out, but just keep that kind of uh, nicely evol evolving as well. So, uh, oh, hang on, yep. Yeah, um, now this first step, it's kind of nice, but what I'd quite like to do here is, well, actually, let's just try putting an extra kind of couple of steps on this so we can use micro steps. Now, micro steps were on the um, original circuit after a firmware update, um, but that was kind of a bit of an awkward page to get to. I think you had to hold shift while you're on the gate page to access it. And when you release shift, you left that page. Again, now with the refined workflow that we've got here, I can just hit the gate button twice. Actually, we're on the drums page, so we only have the micro step page here, but now I can see the micro steps in here. So I'm going to just add an extra micro step in. Now, a micro step is essentially a sub step of what we've got going on on the main sequence of steps. So let's have a quick listen to that now. You can kind of hear that little kind of that double hit on that second kick there. That's nice, but I want to drop the velocity a little bit just to get a bit of movement in that. So I'm going to just press the um, press that kick and just drop the velocity this when you're on the velocity page this allows you to kind of just adjust the how hard that's going to be hit so okay that's nice and again I'm just going to add, add a little bit of a variation with the um, uh, with the velocities going on here and yeah it's kind of all right and I'll just duplicate that there and put that there so Just kind of getting a little bit more kind of where I sort of wanted it to be. Um, let's go to this hi-hat pa pattern. Okay, that sounds kind of nice, but let's add some extra clicky sort of. And again, maybe just add some extra kind of, kind of glitchy kind of rolly sort of stuff in there. Again, velocity, let's just kind of play around with that a little bit. Okay, so we've just added a bit of kind of random velocity in there, but you can hear it start to move a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually start to bring in some probability and some random stuff into, um, into this sequence. And we can do that by going to this new page here. Now, we've got this button at the bottom. It's labeled pattern settings, and I'm going to talk about pattern settings again shortly. But now I'm going to go and press it twice, and this opens up a probability page. Now, in the probability page, you'll see I've got this kind of line of pads here, these controls, and I can now kind of add a probability to a step being triggered. And what this means is that I can essentially just add random kind of variation to this patch. Let's just listen to that on its own. Now you can hear that this is just completely changing up each time. Which is really quite nice. So we've got the kind of constantly evolving kind of thing going on. Let's do something similar on this page. So I'll go to the probability. And again, I'm just kind of randomly choosing a probability for things to trigger. This might sound a bit strange now, I guess, but let's bring that in. So you can use probability to really kind of open stuff up. I'm going to do a similar thing on this kick. Here. So we've just got three drum tracks going on, but there's kind of a lot going on there, kind of rhythmically and musically now as well. Okay, so I mentioned before we've got this uh, pattern settings page here as well. And the pattern settings basically gives us access to individual controls over the patterns in terms of timings and direction and flow. So um, let's, uh, yeah, let's go to a single pattern. Actually, let's start again. Yeah, why not? I'm going to start again. Okay, uh, let's get some... Okay. Let's 
just get a snare on there. Not a clap, no. Let's go for that one. And some hi-hat. There we go. Yeah, that sounds good enough, I think. Let's just put a bit of probability on this one. And again, I like my old little micro step glitchy things. And a bit of uh, velocity control. Okay, so the point was that I wanted to talk about the pattern settings here. Now, you can see here I'm on synth 2, and this is set to normal resolution. So 16 steps is basically a bar in length. So if I press here, I'm going to go into triplet figures. Now it's kind of out of sync with the single bar. You can see it's kind of finishing before. If I go here, it's going to be twice as fast. One, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. And here we've got 30 second triplets, really fast, really fast resolution. Let's go back to the normal speed. Now, if we want to, let's go now to half speed. Okay. And if I go to quarter speed, this one pattern now is lasting for four bars. So in this one pattern, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That means now I've got four bars held in one pattern. So let's again get a sound. Okay. So I'm going to hit record and then um, just, yeah, again, just play some notes in. Now, if you can hear here, what's going on is it's triggering the notes basically bang on the first. And if I go to the micro steps page, you see now, each note is being triggered on the very first micro step of that, uh, of that actual step, the step it's held on. So what does that mean? Well, um, I actually played it in a little bit offbeat, but actually the, the grid, if you like, the quantizing is pulling it back in to, um, to a timing. So let's just take those notes off, and I'm going to now turn off uh, record quantize. And I do that by pressing shift and holding the record button. Okay. And now when I hit play on record as well, I can basically, let's just get up, down an octave. I can now kind of get in between the sequence of steps. So I have a four bar phrase, but I actually have more resolution hidden behind it with the micro steps. So. Now, can you hear I've kind of got that, that groove still is there now. So this is one pattern, but it's equal in length to four of these. So that opens up a lot more kind of sort of possibilities for doing a lot longer kind of musical phrases in here as well. Now let's go to synth one and let's get a um, sound for that. Let's just find the sound I want. Okay, that'll do. And I'm just gonna, again, play some notes in here, so. Okay, of course that's just a single bar, so actually, yeah, let's just clear that. I'll just clear the pattern. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is make this twice as long, 32 steps long. And I'm also gonna duplicate that pattern to here, so I've kept the same pattern, so I have two 32 step patterns, and join those two together. And now I have, again, a four bar musical phrase, but this time it's occupying two patterns because I'm running at the normal speed resolution, the full speed. So let's go back to the synth part here and just record in. Okay, one, two, three. Bring that 
that part that's the part up. Okay, so why have I done this? Well, let's just mute out that second synth part. Now I can use the mutate function in here as well. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to add some extra notes. I'm just going to shove some oct octaves in here as well. So I've got quite a lot of notes going on in there. And actually, before I do anything, I'm just going to hit the save button. So I've got an empty project here. So I'm just going to hit save, save it. Still running, of course. I don't have to stop the sequencer to save that. Now, the reason I've done that is I'm going to use the mutate function now. So. And the mutate is just basically going to move the notes around. So mutate is basically taking the notes that are held on the sequence and then basically repositioning them within that sequence. So I had this initial part and yeah, basically I've just used the mutate function and just kind of moved the notes around in a kind of, in kind of a random way, but in a really quite a nice musical way. Now, of course I saved that project before and the reason I saved it is because I've kind of been messing around with the mutate. Now, of course I've kind of, let's say, you know, change the sequences. It'd take me a while to remember how to reprogram that sequencer back. But because I saved that instance, I could just go to the projects page and hit the shift button. And lo re reloading in the project is just going to instantly reload the project at where it is in its events, in its sequence of events. So that's kind of a nice little performance thing as well as also a great way of kind of generating ideas. So, you know, we've taken a good look at quite a lot of the stuff that we've got on here. A bit mindful of the time because we're going to have a couple of um, a couple of sessions on Circuit Tracks. This is the first. Next week, next Wednesday, same time, which is 9pm in the UK. So I don't know where that is, wherever you are in the world. But in the... Um yeah, in, in, in next Wednesday, we're going to come in and we're going to do a little bit more work on circuit tracks and, and some of the features that we've got on there. Um, but what I want to do just very quickly now is just take you through to Novation Components software, which I believe is, if I can, can see, I think it's here. Nope, that's the back of the circuit. There we go. That's what I wanted. <laughs> um, so Novation Components. Um, now, this this is the software manager for circuit tracks and you can see obviously from this opening page um it's actually a management piece of software that we use for pretty much everything um that needs management within novation so obviously all the synthesizers the original circuit the monostation the sl mark three all the launch pads and that sort of thing but of course we've got the circuit tracks in here as well now um obviously you know thinking about circuit and what circuit actually is i mean you know the reality is it is a device that has been designed without a screen and that's the whole principle behind this this device you know it does not have a screen and it doesn't need one um it, it everything that you need is here under your fingertips it's, it's its whole point is really kind of an immediate workflow there's no menus at all on circuit tracks there's no menu diving um Pretty much everything that you need is accessible directly from the hardware here. Um, but of course, you know, we only have the eight controls here for the synth engine. And, you know, if you think about kind of what a screen would give you, well, a screen in terms of the sequencer um, would kind of give you a grid and give you a playhead and kind of position across a sequence. And oddly enough, that's exactly what we've got here with the pads. Now, obviously, a screen for the synthesizer would give you access to all of the internal kind of uh, synth engine parameters within the device. Now, circuit tr tracks, as I say, has been designed to not be um, 
uh, to, to, to function without a screen. That's, as I say, its whole kind of design purpose. But if we go to this page, that's the one I want. <laughs> if you do want a screen, of course, you can connect your USB to um, your computer. And if you're, um, you know, I mean, it's a standalone application that works on both PC and Mac, but also this works on the cloud as well. Um, so if you're using a web browser that supports Web MIDI, so Chrome and Opera are the two web browsers that support Web MIDI, um, then it will also, op you know, it will also be able to access it. And it's exactly the same piece of software on a Chrome web browser. And if we open up components, this now gives us access to a library set of controls and there's some really nice uh, uh, kind of new ways of working in here in in the library now i, I am aware that because of the uh, streaming software i'm using you can't actually see my mouse and i do apologize for that um but hopefully you'll be able to kind of bear with me on this one but basically here on the library side we've got access to all the packs that we have so for example if i want to access the factory pack i can just click on it and then it's going to load up into the center portion of the screen here. And you can see now I can access my projects, my samples, and my synth patches in here. Now I can do a bit of kind of management here. So maybe I want this project to move here, this project to move here, this project to move here. Maybe I want this project to be a different color. I want it to be that color. I want this one to be this color. I want this one to be this color, just to color code it to help me kind of know which of the, which of the projects that I'm gonna open. Um, so basically you can kind of manage your projects in here. We can manage our samples. We can move them around. Now these are awkwardly labeled the same name, but <laughs> you know, rest assured that basically I'm exchanging the positions of them by just doing this and dragging them around. And I mean, maybe I should have demonstrated this with the patches because you do have names. You see how I grab random decay and just move it here. Base OSC, move that there. And you see it's just flipping them over, which is neat. You know, you can kind of fine tune the pack and how you want this to be set up for your own needs. But what's really nice here is, and I'm just going to open up. Let's see, what should I open up? I'll just open up this one, which has got some spaces in it, I think, in the samples at least. Let's see. Yeah, I've got some spaces here now. OK, originally on circuit um, on the original circuit, I couldn't really kind of mix and match between the packs. But now with circuit tracks, we can do so here. I've got some samples. Um, so I'm going to click show samples. And now I'm given a whole load of different sort of samples that I have um found and downloaded from I think a certain electronic music artist SoundCloud um, as a downloadable file so but now I can basically click a sample from a another pack and start to drag that into this pack and build up a collection of you know of sounds and samples that I can find from wherever I want so for example maybe I've had enough of those samples in the pack now let's go to where it says lo-fi here Oh, hang on, I beg your pardon. No, stay on this page. I want to expand lo-fi, not go to the pack. Show samples. And now I can say, okay, well, I want some lo-fi samples here. And that's just going to load them in. And so basically, I have the ability to pick and mix my, um, my samples, my projects, and my patches. And this really opens up the way that you can manage your packs within uh, uh, within Novation Components. Um, another great thing that we can do, so for example, here I've just got this uh, calc samples thing loaded up I can say okay actually i want all of the samples from this ambient downbeat to go in there so i can just click on the bank and just drag the whole bank in and it will say okay this will write the current sample content for the opened pack now i've just dragged all of the ambient downbeat samples did i do that let's do that again drag it there okay continue yeah and so basically now i've just taken all of the samples maybe there aren't any in there oh no there are Ah, okay. It's, it's put them up at the top. There's not a whole load of them. So yeah, but basically I can just grab a whole bank of, of samples and just drag them in. Um, it's a really useful um, way of working within components. Now, that's obviously the management side. And of course, I can save these packs and these will then appear in my account on the cloud as well. So I can, I can just basically log in uh, to components on uh, on Google Chrome and have access to all of this stuff once I'm logged in. So I can save all this. I can download the packs. I can overwrite the packs. I can basically do what I want there. Or, of course, I can send to circuit tracks. And when I hit send to circuit tracks, 
it basically asks me if I want to send the whole pack, the projects or the samples. And if I hit send pack, then obviously it's going to open up and say, OK, these are the packs that you have on your micro SD card. I mean, we looked at packs earlier, of course, and I've got obviously a lot of spare spaces here. So I could just choose one of these, click on that, and it's just going to send it over into that space on the SD card, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, so basically this is kind of the librarian side. Now let's go to the synth page. And yes, I do want to leave this page and let's create a patch. So I'm going to go to synth one. Yeah, here we go. And you can see now, hopefully, if you're familiar with the previous um, the previous uh, uh, um, uh, component synth editor, this has been massively refined. And I think this really opens up a lot more kind of, um, uh, yeah, a lot more kind of of an enjoyable experience, I would say, of actually programming up your own synth sounds. And here we have a screen as well. And that <laughs> that to me kind of, it makes sense, you know, if I want to work on circuit without a screen, then I don't open up components to work on it in a screen. But if I um, want a screen so that I can access my synth parameters, I have a screen that will allow me to do that. And it can be the biggest screen in the world. So, you know, <laughs> so basically, um, yeah, if you want a screen, it's there. Just plug in a USB cable and open components and you have a screen. If you don't want a screen, um, you don't have to have a screen. Don't plug in a USB connection. Don't open components. It's as simple as that. But anyway, let's uh, look at the um, the synth editor. And you can see now, um, basically, as I say, everything's been refined. Everything's been brought into one main page for the engine. And we have two oscillators in here with a whole load of different wave shapes that we can choose. A whole load of controls. So, you know, we've got, let's say, some wavetable stuff here. Let's get an analog sync wavetable here. And then we can index through that as well. So you can actually see the waveforms changing shape, which is really neat, really nice. Um, the filter as well. I think this is a great way to learn what kind of a filter does and how it works because you get a really nice little graphic of kind of what's going on there and it's a, um, a multi-mode filter so again that's a low pass but let's go to a band pass that's there we go we can add resonance and just bring that peak up and um, we can change the width of it as well um, and yeah I mean it's a really um, re yeah really nice kind of workflow in here and hopefully it kind of opens up you know kind of what you can see as a such a really powerful instrument we've got our two oscillators We've got the, the mixer here, we've got the filter here with a load of different filter choices. Um, we've got three envelopes. So we've got envelopes one, two, three there. Um, amp envelope, uh, filter envelope, and then a modulation envelope. But of course, they can be put to wherever you want them. And then LFO controls, we've got two LFOs as well. Um, and by bringing everything into this one place in this really nice graphic en uh, sort of environment, makes it a lot easier to work with. Then, of course, we've got our effects as well. And we have got an equalizer for both synths in here as well. That's a really useful feature to have. Um, we've got a chorus and a phaser that we can use. We've got some distortion and we've got the voice controls here. And then on the final page here, the modulation matrix, this is where we can set up our different macros. And the macro controls obviously are relating to the pots on the hardware. So you can set up this to be kind of basically whatever you want. So let's... Um, Let's see, select a macro one. Let's say I want, you know, an oscillator control here. So I'm going to go for uh, saw density here. And maybe in on the same control, I'll have a bit of density detune. And I can add depth here. Um, in fact, let's just go to the synth part here. In fact, I just go to an empty thing and then just... Let's just create a new... Um, uh, yeah, let's create a new patch again. So I'll create patch. And there we go. Basic sawtooth, initial patch. Go to the modulation. And as I say now, I'm just going to very quickly load in um, some controls. So let's go density here on this first pot. And then we'll go density detune here. What I can do, I mean, this is really quite clever. I can say, OK, for the first half of the travel of the pot, I'm going to have a depth of oscillator one density to about there. So as I turn oscillator uh, at the macro one on the synth, kind of a little bit maybe subtle let's just add a bit of depth into that so you can kind of hear it on the video hopefully it's kind of it's getting a bit of the density there but let's add some density detune in there as well so now I've got a control on the oscillator and I'm if you can see pot number one up at the top 
I can basically, that's moving as I move the, um, moving the pot on the device. So this is how I can kind of set up my macros. I can even say, okay, well actually let's just make the density detune happen maybe just after we've hit the oscillator on maximum density control. So you've got a very kind of clever way of working here. Maybe we'll say, okay, on this part of the control, okay, just click on the down arrow, come on. No destination, once my mouse has stopped working, I think. There we go. Let's say I'm gonna go for a bit of um, V-Sync as well, why not? So I'm gonna add a bit of V-Sync, but just at the top part of the, of the control. Oh, I need to add depth, of course. Let's go down an octave. So really a very powerful way of controlling and making these macro controls, you know, nice and powerful. And then, of course, underneath that, we've got the modulation matrix. And there are 20 slots. There are 20 controls for the modulation matrix in here. So it's a vast amount of control. And this modulation matrix basically allows me, a bit like a modular synth, if you like, to take different component parts of the synth engine. So LFO1, for example, here. And let's apply that to the um, filter frequency by an amount here. So now when I press the note, you can hear we've got LFO one. Let's increase the depth there. And once again, I could say, okay, well, let's go to the modulation pot, which is number seven here. And on number seven, let's say, okay, let's grab a destination. Come on, mouse, there we go, thank you. And I'm gonna go to mod matrix slot one. And now I'm going to add a depth and amount of that. Now I can use a modulation control on the hardware, which you can't see, but I'm moving pot number seven to increase the depth of the LFL ones to the filter. So we've got a really powerful system here to work with. Um, so that's kind of, you know, the synth engine. Now, you might notice that on here, we've actually only can see one synth engine at a time, whereas on uh, the original component software, we had two. You see this is a purple color and that matches the purple color of synth one on the hardware now i'm just going to press and again you can't see this but i'm just going to press the synth 2 button on circuit tracks and watch what happens in components immediately it's going to go green i've accessed synth 2 and now i can start to play around with that and i can see the title of the the, the sound that i've got loaded up if i want to go back to synth one i just press synth one on the hardware and now I can just basically flip between the two by using the switch on the hardware and that will open up the appropriate um, synth engine. So that's the synth editor. Final word. And then I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> but basically, I mentioned before about the MIDI tracks within um, circuit tracks, of course. And the MIDI tracks obviously are, are great for sending note data. But I also mentioned how we can use the, C the macro controls as CC controls for uh, controlling our external devices and in here i can create midi templates so basically i can access each of the eight pots and give that a cc value that i can then uh, connect to a parameter on my external midi synth so for example macro one i think i'm right in, if i remember correctly i think the peaks filter is cc 28 so let's just put cc 28 on macro one and I can hit send to circuit tracks. Now this is where it all goes wrong because maybe it's not that CC value, but let's find out. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to circuit tracks. MIDI two is my part for controlling here. Now I set it to preset number four. Now if I press the preset button on a MIDI track, I have eight presets to choose from. And I'll go to preset number four and now, Maybe it wasn't the filter after all. Oh, I should have looked up the CC number first. Oh dear, <laughs> how embarrassing. I should probably know what that CC number is. Oh well, never mind. But of course you can access, you know, any kind of, um, like get your manual open. And in fact, I don't know why I didn't do this. I have got the, uh, I've got the peak manual open here and it's 29. That's uh, not 28, it's 29. <laughs> One off. Oh, shucks. So I'm just going to very quickly send to circuit tracks here. You can't see me do this, but I'm going to hit send to part four. And now let's just initialize the patch so we can hear that. But now I'm playing the peak sound. 
and I've got the filter control here. So, you know, by actually giving you eight sets of mappable knobs on here, you can really expand the types of control you've got over your hardware. In fact, earlier on presets one, two, and three, I put three different mappings for the peak. So one is kind of general mapping and it kind of follows the labeling that we've got on here. Page two I made, I thought, right, okay, I'll access the amp envelope. So attack, decay, sustain, release. And the same for the modulation one envelope, attack, decay, sustain, release. Then on MIDI three, uh, sorry, preset three, I put a load of LFO controls and some volume controls for the oscillators in there as well. So I've got three pages worth of controls. That's, you know, what's three eights? That's 24 different pots externally um, that I can control and sculpt sounds with on the peak. Okay, I'm going to finish up now um, for this session. Um, as I said earlier, we're going to um, uh, we, we're going to basically cover some more stuff next week. We'll do a bit more production work on on on, on circuit tracks. Um, as I say, I'm going to finish up, but I can see oh my god, how many comments have there been? There's been a load of comments, and I've had my head down talking about this. So I'm just going to very quickly. I say quickly, that's going to take some time to go through. Let's uh, let's sc <laughs> scroll through and see if I can find it. Okay, here's a good question. This one is way earlier from a guy called Question Mark Q Music. And this is, can you still use Synth 1 and 2 as MIDI out? 2, giving you the option to sequence four instruments. Completely, totally. Um, MIDI 1 and MIDI 2 on circuit tracks on the hardware, these two external tracks here, um, are designed to be dummy tracks. They can be used to control whatever you want. Um, you know, they're not attached to any sounds internally. But Synth 1 and Synth 2, okay, yeah, they're attached to internal sounds, but they're also, they have their own MIDI channel that they output on as well. And so, yeah, if I want to control three or four external devices using the circuit tracks as my main kind of brain for the sequencer, I can easily just, you know, say, okay, I want to use synth one for the peak instead of uh, MIDI two. You know, I can do, I can completely decide. Uh, one thing I should mention is that we have got a settings page available here. So shift and the save button takes us to the settings page. And again, it's, it's labeled up on there. But now I'm faced with 16 pads up at the top here that give me my MIDI channels. So synth one is currently set to MIDI channel one. Synth two is set to... This one, which is, God, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, MIDI 13. Uh, MIDI 1 is set to uh, channel 10. MIDI 2, randomly set to 15. The only channel that we can't access is channel 16, and that's because that's reserved for the internal kind of global controls um, for circuit tracks itself. But I can quite happily set up my MIDI channels at any time on the device by just visiting that page. That's the setup page, so shift and where it says setup is just above the uh, save button, just press that. And now I'm into my settings page and I can choose MIDI channels. I can also choose whether to send or receive notes, send or receive clock, send or receive program change or send and or receive control messages as well. We've also got this little line of controls here that changes the, 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 the amount of ticks that come out on the analog clock. So I think at the fastest setting, it's 24 pulse per quarter note, but you can bring that down to, I, th I should probably double check, I think it's possibly down to four pulse per quarter note. I might be wrong there, but you've got a whole load of variations of analog clock outputs. And again, that's controlled from the setup page. So that was uh, a question, which I thought was good. I'll just see, I'll maybe do two more questions and then um, we'll, we'll move on. Let's see. Uh, questions, questions, lots of talk. <laughs> Graham Mark Music. Thank you very much for that. Calc, does the circuit pair well with the trombone? Well, of course, I'm going to say it does. It, it, it pairs incredibly well uh, with, the, uh, with the trombone. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Yeah. A lot to talk here about Gabe Miller as well. Obviously a top, top guy for the circuit. And don't worry, guys. He's going to be getting a circuit tracks at some point very soon. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a question there. Possible to have MIDI out set as out plus through? No, it's either an out or a through. 
Um, so yeah, but you can choose on the through switch whether you want that to be a second out or whether you want it to be, um, if you want it to be a, a true through. Okay. Uh, let's see. No, I think I think that we're uh, we we're, we're good. Let's see. Did tracks one or two sound automation as MIDI CC? Oh, that's a great question, Martin Dirk Zimmer. I uh, got me on that one. I know that obviously on the original circuit, um, automation on the CC microcontrols came out through the USB connection only, not through MIDI. But that's a superb question. I, I'm going to say it probably doesn't, but let me get back to you next week on that. So, Martin, you're going to have to come back and, and watch next week's um, uh, 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 stream as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. No, I think we're good. Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty boring for you guys just watching me scroll through <laughs> a list of chats here. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish up for now. But thank you very much indeed, and um, thanks very much for joining me on this this evening. Um, I hope you're able to join me next week. We're going to do a lot more kind of stuff with um, with circuit tracks. We're going to explore some different, various different things that we've got on here as well. Um, I hope you kind of agree as well that you know once you kind of get to understand a little bit of what's going on with this piece of hardware as i said right at the very beginning it's kind of it genuinely is a bit a case of this is more than the sum of its parts um you know on paper it might look like okay it's just maybe kind of you know we're quite known for the the firmware updates that happened for the original circuit maybe it's just kind of almost like a circuit you know 1.5 that's not the case at all this has had a really kind of a really good going over and i think once you start to experience kind of the workflow that you have with circuit tracks you know you can understand that you know it's a big development really from the uh, the original circuit you know there's a lot of similarities of course the whole of the the original circuit dna is in there but just the way that kind of that it's been refined and you know brought forward i think is really kind of has brought a lot to the table so Without any further ado, I'm going to bid you adieu and thank you very much for joining me this evening and hope to see you